Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Today is the 30th day of uh, April 2024. Uh, one of the most enduring uh, rhymes from our primary school days is 30 days at September, April, June and November. If you're, if you're like me, you still do that to know which month ends on the 30th and which month ends on the 31st. I just did that and I know that today is the final day in April 2024 which means tomorrow is the 1st of May and just uh, just so we don't forget uh, happy workers day in advance to the people who are working all over Nigeria that will be celebrating tomorrow workers day. Uh, well today on the show we're going to be looking at uh, power as one of our hot topics. Customers not enjoying 20 hours of electricity will not pay the new tariff. That is according to the Minister of Power. Uh, customers not enjoying 20 hours will not pay the new tariff. That is what he has said. We also are going to be looking at the fact that Nigeria has the highest burden of children born with HIV AIDS. Uh, that is really worrisome. The highest burden of children born with HIV AIDS are in Nigeria. We are going to also look at the top trending issues, uh, issues that caught our attention in the last 24 hours, and then we will be looking at headlines on uh, some of our national dailies. Uh, we, our hearts go to, it's not a morning thing, but uh, the people who may have missed a lot of things because of uh, what is happening, the fuel situation in the country right now. Uh, a lot of big cities are facing fuel scarcity. So many people were stranded yesterday and so many are likely to be stranded today. We just beg those who are employers of labor to understand a little bit with uh, the situation because of the situation that is happening. Some people may come to work late. I'm not saying people should use that as an excuse, but you should know that uh, it's really, really hard finding fuel, finding vehicles that will uh, take you to where you're going to. So we do hope that um, the condition or the situation will be better a little bit as uh, the day goes on and uh, in the coming days also. Uh, we do not know what is really happening, but in uh, one of our top trendings, we'll will tell us a story about that. In the meantime, we'll just take a short break now, uh, look at the quote for the day, and set our minds on the right footing for today's program. Stay with us. Technology, like art, is a soaring exercise of the human imagination. That's according to Daniel Bell. Technology, like art, is a soaring exercise of the human imagination. Daniel Bell, uh, those are the words of Daniel Bell, and that's our quote for the day today. So art, technology are not so much different because they all stem from the imagination of the human mind. Uh, if you're imagining things, I'm not saying hallucinating, I'm not saying schizophrenia or whatever a mental illness you, you may be facing. I'm saying if you can picture some things in your eyes, um, in your mind, sorry, uh, sometimes it's half of the things uh, that materialize. If you can picture yourself in a particular situation, sometimes it leads to that uh, situation being a part of your life. So whatever is from within is what comes outside and that's the greatest thing that you can take care of. Take care of what you imagine, take care of what your mind uh, wanders to, take care of what your mind conceives and all that because uh, your mind makes you whether you like it or not. It is your mind that gives you courage, it is your mind that gives you uh, procrastination that you don't get to do the things that you need to do. It is your mind that gives you fear that you cannot do a particular thing. It's your mind that gives you confidence that you can do a particular thing. It's your mind that tells you that there are more things that you can achieve and then you picture in your mind how it's going to be and then from there invention comes, innovation comes and all that. So like art, putting the picture of something together and making it look really, really astonishing like um, the Leonardo the Da Vinci and all the greatest, the great artists that we know, uh, they imagined whatever they did 
and then they produced it and then it was beautiful you see the mona lisa it was someone's imagination and put uh, it was put into art and we say it is one of the greatest arts work in history but that's the same thing with technology it comes from what is being imagined so there is so much that um, your imagination uh, contributes to your persona your your your, your being your your the personality that you are it is is coming from your imagination so imagine the right things read the right books watch the right uh, things um, do the right things be in the right company and let your imagination be always positive and then your life uh, dramatically is going to be positive as well it's a wonderful day final day in april 2024 and let's take some top trending before we go to the papers now the first one is oil marketers point to nnpcl for fresh fuels scarcity that's the nigeria's major oil supplier nigerian national petroleum company nnpc limited has been blamed by oil marketers for the recent scarcity of petrol which has seen filling stations in states like lagos abuja port harcourt kaduna sokoto kanu benwe uh, and others experiencing very long queues on monday 29th of april that was yesterday the national president of the petroleum products retail outlets owners association of nigeria petroan Billy Gills Harry commented on the lack of petrol supply from NNPC to oil marketers like Petron. He said, and I quote, I would like to correct Nigerians that we retail outlet owners or marketers, as they generally call us, is the reason for this. We do not have any reason not to serve the public and we are willing to serve the public. All that is required is for us to have petroleum products delivered to us from NNPC and we will make sure that our retail outlets are open. Some of them are even open for 24 hours. Meanwhile, the Public Relations Officer of the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Ipman, has advised that the ongoing petrol shortage is expected to take around two weeks to resolve. He said that most of the refineries in Europe are undergoing turnaround maintenance, so sourcing petroleum products has become a bit difficult. The situation is that there is no product. Once there is a lack of supply, or inadequate supply, what you will see is scarcity and queues will emerge at filling stations. So we don't know why that is. Uh, over the years, have they not been doing turnaround maintenance in these uh, facilities that all of them will just go uh, to, will just begin turnaround maintenance at the same time so that we uh, experience a shortage here in Nigeria? I don't understand why that is. And a lot of people are just raising eyebrows. What is it? What is? It? Why is it that is NNPC that is still more or less the sole supplier of petroleum products to all outlets, retail outlets? Why are there no licenses for people to just bring in this uh, petrol? Uh, well, we've been told uh, in theory that it is available. The licenses are available for people to import petroleum products and all that, but we really haven't seen it. it what is the challenge? Is it that the people who are supposed to import these petroleum products do not have enough capital? If they don't have enough capital, what is the government doing about it? Are they helping businesses to grow or are they just looking for uh, businesses that will come from outside because they have the financial muscle to, to continue to do what they, they like to do best, exploiting the people of Nigeria? See the, 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 uh, what happened in the airline or in the aviation industry. Uh, what other airlines were doing. They were claiming that there was so much uh, debt that was owed them. Their money and dollars could not be uh, repatriated and all the blah, blah, blah. And once someone, a local airline, uh, came up and said, okay, you know what, we're going to survive it, so we're going to cut down our prices. All of them, in spite of the fact that these problems were still there, all of them brought down their prices to lower than that uh, indigenous uh, airline to put that other indigenous airline out of business uh, that's as far as I'm concerned that is what it means put him out of business and then we can now go back to exploiting the people of Nigeria is the government not looking at this so why is it that it is NNPCL that is still supplying the sole supplier of petroleum products to 
Nigerian uh, retailers. I, I don't know how that works. I do hope that that will change in the shortest possible time. Yesterday, a guest on the show was saying it's possible that um, because they are waiting for the Port Harcourt refinery to, to come on stream and the Dangote refinery to also begin selling fuel to people, that's why they are doing this. Whatever they have, they don't want to buy anymore uh, so that they are ref rationing the small one that they have right now so that when that refinery comes on, on stream and the Port Harcourt refinery comes on stream, they wouldn't have any... Um, they wouldn't have to spend any money on on fuel coming out of the country well so how long will it stay the experts have said maybe two more weeks will we survive two more weeks in this kind of scarcity only god can tell us now mfla alleges abuse of office by court that's the second story on monday 29th of april 2024 represented by senior advocate of nigeria olale konjo Suspended Central Bank of Nigeria CBN Governor Godwin Emefele challenged the jurisdiction of an Ikeja Special Offenses Court to hear the alleged abuse of office and multi-billion dollar fraud labeled against him. Ojo submitted that Emefele cannot be tried in the High Court of any state in Nigeria for alleged acts of abuse of his office as this raises issues of constitutionality and legality. He also said that the first four of 26 charges filed by the EFCC against the MFLA were unconstitutional as they are not contained in any law in Nigeria. He asked the court to make an order striking out counts one to four of the charges. Through its own counsel, Rotimio Yedekbo, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, urged the court to dismiss MFLA's application. The application of the first defendant is unconstitutional as this is the means to withdraw to draw us backwards and that is what uh, he said justice raman oshodi rejected mfla's request to discontinue hearing oshodi deferred ruling on the preliminary objection to final judgment state according to the judge upon the former cbn governor's arraignment on april 8 the prosecution informed the court of an accelerated hearing in which the defense did not object so I'm not in the legal profession. I don't know how that works, that uh, any state court cannot, prove, cannot uh, try him. Uh, maybe he should be tried by the Supreme Court. I don't know. I, I don't have the details of what he felt uh, was, the, what was, his, what, w was what it was supposed to be. Uh, but uh, I just think that um, if you're not suspecting that it's a witch hunt, if you're not suspecting that uh, the court will be partial, if you're not suspecting any foul play, and you're taken to a court. I don't know why you can't just defend yourself. Uh, I'm just assuming everybody is, is, is innocent. And if you're innocent, and no matter the court they're taking you to, even if it is uh, the customary court, so long as you know who you are, you know what you are, you know what you have done, and you have your evidences, there's no, no cause to fear. But, you know, I leave that to the legal minds. If this is not constitutional, whatever is not constitutional, let us find out if it is not let his legal team uh, uh, put their foot down and let us learn to do the right things in Nigeria. So uh, we wish them luck, whatever side of the divide, whether it is the government, if they can get that judgment and get him to, to jail, if he did what they say he did, fine. If it is a MFLA that can get a good judgment also and prove that he didn't do those things, fine. Nigerians are just waiting and hoping for a better Nigeria. And we're also hoping that we get to the time where everybody, not just some people, everybody answers to whatever they do. There should be repercussions for wrong done. All levels, everybody, so long as you're a Nigerian and you're carrying a Nigerian passport or you are recognized Nigerian. Okay, let's take this one, uh, maybe the final one. Prince Harry and Meghan set to visit Nigeria in May. Mm. The Invictus Games, a sporting event for military personnel uh, wounded in action, was founded by Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, in 2014. The uh, last Invictus Games in 2023 were attended by 500 participants, including Nigeria. Nigeria successfully earned a gold medal in powerlifting and bronze in table tennis. 
Uh, Meghan and uh, Harry's trip to Nigeria will consolidate Nigeria's stronghold at the Games and the possibility of hosting the event in later years. During their stay in the country, they will be meeting with service members and hosting an array of cultural activities. The Defence Headquarters Director of Defence Information, Brigadier General uh, Tukur Gusau, uh, was the one who said this in a statement on Monday, 29th of April. 2024 and i continue quoting him the visit is to consolidate nigeria's stronghold at the game and the possibility of hosting the event in later years um, the minister of defense mohammed Badaru, also said this and he was in germany for last year's events and has accepted to host the games when granted uh, to nigeria we, we do hope that we can host those games I, I'm, that game i'm sure um, it's uh, for the commonwealth and prince harry has, uh, is the one who uh, brought this to be. So we do hope that um, when he comes, he's going to really achieve what uh, we're hoping that it's going to achieve. Uh, but the state is for a cultural visit. So I do hope that we are going to use that opportunity. We can use that opportunity to really showcase our culture to uh, the British uh, royals. Even if, even if they are stripped of their um, some of their titles, they are still royal. Uh, they are still royalty. They have royal blood running in their veins. So no matter what is done to them, a, someone who is royal is royal. Royalty is royalty, no matter what. Stripped of the garments or not, the blood still runs there. So we cannot remove it from their DNA. So we are going to be honored to have uh, Harry and his wife, Megan, uh, who is our sister as well, you know, uh, visit Nigeria. But we do hope that the arrangements will be such, a, uh, such that um, they will want to come back and they will want to uh, give us the rights to host those games uh, in later years, not too long from now, uh, because if, if the cultural displays, if every other thing that uh, uh, they will be treated to will be attractive enough, then they will consider that, you know. So. Whoever is organizing this, know that um, we are showing the picture of Nigeria, the true picture of Nigeria to the world. Let's take every opportunity to showcase what we are, who we are, and what we can do, and why people should invest in Nigeria, they should live in Nigeria. Perhaps if America is saying they're not going to give him a permanent residency or all the, the, the things that Donald Trump is talking about, um, uh, citizenship for uh, for the royal or whatever he needs from America and perhaps they could just come to Nigeria and live here and do business here and you know it'll be nice don't you think okay so uh, that's the much we can take on our top trending when we take this break we're going to look at the weather a little bit and after that we will go straight to the papers and see what the headlines are this morning once again good morning and welcome to the show <music> 